Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha aka Geek XX Chic, and I'm here with another review to The Flash. This is for episode 13 of season 4, which was called I See Your True Colors. Okay, I didn't have the I See You part, but every time I hear that, Cindy Lauper, right in my head. Um, this episode was great. This was really good. This was really good. I liked last week's, but it was kind of like a, okay, you know, episode. This one was great. And not just in, like, just the comedy and stuff, but I think plot-wise and story development-wise, pretty amazing. Really, really liked this episode. Um, I have a lot to talk, like, there's a lot of really cool things that went down. And, and I think what I liked most about this episode is that things moved along. Like, we're still not to the point where we know what DeVoe's up to, but we moved the plot along quite a bit from where we came back from the hiatus because we had a little bit of development since we came back from the break, but it hasn't been massive. But I feel like this episode kind of really gave us a good little um, push in the right direction towards getting to, you know, what, the culmination of what everything has been, everything that's been going on with DeVoe is getting to, which, which we need to be at. I feel like the writers were very smart. Episode 13 marks the halfway point, which means we need to get to a point, like, we should be getting to the, you know, the climax of the season here. So I feel like this episode really started to put some more dominoes in place, but of course there are still some big questions um, that were kind of left here. So I'm just gonna jump into the, the points that I wrote down because I have quite a few of them. One of the things I absolutely adored in this episode, even though it was brief, was seeing Barry be smart. I think I complained about this last season as well, that one of the things I loved about season, like the first season of The Flash, like episodes one through nine of season one were some of my favorite episodes ever. And one of the things I loved in the first, I think it was two episodes, we got to see a lot of things like, you know, Barry like mapping out like the, the crime scene in his head and doing the forensic, you know, um, kind of st storytelling in his head when he looked at a crime scene. And I loved seeing that because Barry is not just a speedster. He's actually very smart. He's very, very smart. He's a scientist as well as being, you know, having these metahuman powers. And I feel like the show, especially in season two and three, just kind of relied a little too heavily on the fact that he was a meta. In this episode, because Barry didn't have the luxury of his speed, I love that he had to go back to basics and actually use that brain of his and show us that he's a genius, that he is smart. And I just, I liked it. I liked it a lot because I love, you know, it gives another dimension to Barry that I think, again, we all knew, but the show just kind of forgot about, I feel like, for so long. So I enjoy the whole MacGyvering of getting out of the cells. I expect that from a man who works in a laboratory and <laughs> knows about chemistry or chemicals and chemistry. I really hope the show finds more ways in the future to incorporate the fact that Barry is not just, you know, a guy who runs out and does things really fast. He can actually use his brain and actually use his scientific knowledge to help Team Flash from time to time. Sorry guys, I had to get a little bit more light going on in here. It's raining and so it's a little bit darker than it normally would be around here. The second thing I really loved, um, it was kind of nice to see the whole <laughs> Dibney pretending to be Wolf, but still pretending to be Dib Dibney. You know, that whole uh, incepting on the acting thing. Um, I'm still a little fuzzy as to how Ralph can change his melanin, but I guess if he can change his body to look like someone else, that means everything. His hair color changed, everything else. So we'll suspend the disbelief for that. <laughs> But I do love, like, I had no idea Ralph was a ship, sh like, I, I got that obviously he shifts his shape in order to stretch, but um, it never occurred to me that he'd be able to actually arrange his body to be somebody else. I mean, the voice part is still a little bit, you know, like, it's one thing to change your body, but to change your voice is different, but it's kind of a mystique kind of, kind of power, which is really cool and super handy. <laughs> but I really like that scene with, you know, Warden Wolf getting to be a little bit silly and awkward. And it, I think that, yeah, I don't know the name of the actor, but I think he did a really good job of, you know, him pretending to be somebody else, pretending to be him. <laughs> so that was just a really fun little moment in, in the episode. And I also wonder if DeVoe actually knew that Ralph could do that. My guess is that he 
he knew maybe that Ralph would get the stretchy powers, but he may not have known how how advanced and intricate those powers could be. It's very interesting. I just wonder, but it sounds to me from what we saw at the end that Devoe did not anticipate that Ralph would be able to do that. And I mean, that's kind of good because Devoe, no, actually that makes sense. That does make sense because Devoe, everything that Devoe knows so far is based on him studying the people that primarily Team Flash to our knowledge, but studying the people based on their typical behavior. But Ralph was acting atypically before he joined Team Flash, right? He was out there, you know, conning people, living the life that was not really true to himself. And now that he's with Team Flash, he's being more like his real self, even though that person's a little problematic. But deep down, Ralph does want to help people. That's why he became a cop, presumably. And, you know, that he's now starting to act in a way that DeVoe would not have anticipated. So I think that that's probably going to work again to Team Flash's favor, something that DeVoe hasn't taken into account. And what I love is that we're seeing that DeVoe is getting cocky which I knew was gonna happen. But I mean, before, I think that he was still a little bit humble in the past because I think the fact that his body was deteriorating and he had these limitations that made him dependent on his wife, he kind of had a sense of humility in him that kind of kept him, you know, always seeking out the next thing. But the fact that even, you know, she asked, um, that his wife asked that question in the beginning about like, well, what do we do about this, this whole situation of them trying to escape. And he was like, I don't know, right? And I don't think it's a matter of him necessarily not knowing in the sense of he couldn't have figured it out. But I think he honestly is just so arrogant now that he's like, there's no way anyone can possibly stop me. So I'm not even gonna bother thinking about that, right? He's just like, I'm so above everybody that I ain't gonna stoop to actually thinking about these minions anymore. But that's a good thing for Team Flash, right? Because him getting cocky means he's gonna get sloppy. And he's getting to that point where he's not really caring. Like this whole thing, which I'll get to the end with, with what Ralph did. I mean, it didn't even seem to phase him. He's like, yeah, Team Slash has got to have some good times once in a while, but don't worry. Like, this is, this is good. These are like outcomes that obviously he had not thought about and he's not taking the time to think about. So that's a very interesting thing. I feel like the episode brought out and I'm glad that we're starting to see where the cracks in DeVoe's armor are finally gonna start to show because it was really hard to see beforehand how it was gonna work. I have a big question as to what, what does DeVoe do? Like, what, what, is the, what is the chair doing? This is the part that still is a question for me. I mean, I get that he took over um, Dominic's body, but is Dominic still alive? Like, is his consciousness still there someplace, just not the dominant part of his brain? Like, and with all these other matters that he absorbed, like, what, what what's going on with them, I guess, is my question. Like, are they dead or are they just, like, lost, I guess. is So I, I'm, I'm hoping we'll get an answer to that question at some point. Um, I'm hoping Mrs. DeVoe will provide us with a little bit of um, some answers to where that's concerned. But I am curious as to what exactly he's doing, and it sounds like he's amalgamating all their powers, which is terrifying because that means DeVoe now has a superior intellect, he has the mind reading ability, he has um, the bad luck charm, he has the ability to hack just about anything, and he can now turn, uh, he can animate effigies, um, and he can shrink stuff. So that's, that's a terrifying combination of things, like Barry's good, but he ain't that good. You know what I mean? Like, that's a lot of things to deal with at once, and with superior intellect, he'll find, I mean, for all I know, he might be able to combine, oh my gosh, what if DeVoe can combine them? Okay, I kind of want to see that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That would be really interesting to see. But, I'm just wondering what's going on there. Like, what is happening? Is he just absorbing... I just want to know what's happening. What is, what is, what is the creepy octopus chair doing to all these metas? And... Why does he need it for just himself? How is this going to bring about whatever the heck the enlightening is, which we still don't know? Those are some of the big questions that came out of it for me. Um, on to the end. Um, I did not see Ralph changing into DeVoe. I should have. I feel a little stupid that I did it because I thought, well, see, we can change into anybody. Of course. Why not pretend to be DeVoe? That makes sense. Um... Honestly, it was worth it just to see the look on DeVoe's wife's face, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was smart. I never even thought of that. I never thought that, oh, yeah, if DeVoe's not dead, crime hasn't been committed. 
boom, done. They're not going to be able to come up with another body, now are they? Uh, <laughs> but poor Ralph, God knows how long is he going to have to sustain pretending to be DeVoe. But, um, that was great. That moment was awesome. I don't, I didn't, this show is actually genuinely surprising me, which I didn't think you'd really be able to do anymore. And I love, like, Kudos to the writers because they're, that shows a lot of ingenuity on their part. They're really writing this season to be different than previous seasons. Not everything is predictable this season, and I love it. That's really good writing, especially since they're writing about a man who's supposed to be the, the biggest genius that's ever lived, right? So that was great. That was a great moment. I'm so happy my baby is out of prison. It was breaking my heart to see him in there. It was breaking my heart for my West Down to be separated. And even it was just a brief moment, I'm so glad that they're back together. I'm ready for the sweetness. Y'all know, y'all know that I'm a West Down fan. You know I need it. I mean, three whole weeks without West Down was harsh. Like, without like the real cutesy stuff. We did get some great stuff in the prison, but I'm glad we got at least one moment this episode and it was cute. You're my home. I mean, they need to stop with this Hallmark stuff, man. I'm not made for this mushy life. It's not me, I'm not about it. On to the big piece de resistance of this episode, the part that blew my mind at the end. Like, I've been saying for a while that Mama DeVoe has been having some, she clearly has been doubting some things. Ever since Clifford moved into Dominic's body, you can see that she has been unsettled. And at first I thought maybe it really is just the body, but it's not that. It's clearly she's starting to see traits in DeVoe that she didn't think, I guess, were there, or perhaps they were never there before. But she's starting to see, finally, what I predicted very early in the season, which is that DeVoe is going to get to a point where he's going to think he's just a little bit too good for everyone, including his brilliant wife. And her whole thing is based on the idea that her and her husband are equals and that their love is equal and that that's more important than anything and everything. And DeVoe is slowly but surely, Clifford, pulling away from her. And you can see it's small, it's subtle, but it's definite movement away from her. And in her mind, she clearly knew that some terrible things were going to have to happen, but I don't think she ever thought that Clifford would kill someone in cold blood. But I mentioned that, you know, people who are super, super intelligent sometimes have issues with um, expressing empathy. They often find it harder and harder to connect with people because they're at this level intellectually that's very... Um, isolating and we're starting to see that with DeVoe now and that you know he's keeping things from his wife we saw several times in this episode that she was not up to speed on the plan right you know she was like what about like how did you didn't tell me about what was you know that that Dibney could do that you didn't tell me that you were gonna really you know you're gonna release the metas early or take the metas early you said you're gonna wait till we got all of them and he's just like yeah 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 I told you stuff but you know I just didn't give you details right it was dismissive it was kind of mean for being real, but I think she's starting to see that she's not a partner in this anymore. She's becoming the help, right? She's just there to do all the stuff that he's too busy to or unable to do at this point. And uh, her starting to block him out, that's pretty huge. But the fact that, you know, she feels the need to block her thoughts from him and the fact that he's not being as forthright about the plans anymore shows that there's a distrust building between the two of them. They both don't fully trust each other. And that chasm is starting to break in between them. And I think I predicted this earlier as well, where I said that I feel like that she's going to be key to taking them down because she's going to pull, I, I said it, right? They're going to, they're going to drift apart. It's going to be her. She's going to see changes that she doesn't like. And then the big thing, holy crap, what the hell did he put in her drink? It looked like, oh, I just realized what it was. It's the tears. It's the tear drug from the, from the weeper. I forgot about that. I didn't even think about the fact that he would have had the weeper. That's right. I mean, that probably sold the weeper to him. But the point is he drugged his wife. Like, I cannot imagine a deeper violation of trust to be, as, than being drugged by your spouse into basically not, like he wants her just to have no resistance, no thoughts of her own. Like that is terrifying. She essentially became a slave in that point. 
Like she's no longer his partner. She's no longer his equal. She's barely his wife. Now he's, she's just a minion that he's willing to stoop to drugging to keep in line. That's some sociopathic stuff, man. That's some dark stuff. Like, wow, Flash Riders. I was not expecting that because that's dark. That is really, really dark. And uh, I kind of like it, though. I mean, it it does go, and not, not the situation I don't like. I like the idea that the Flash is showing that a man like DeVoe is no joke. And that, you know, even though we saw in the beginning of the season, it seemed like he was just this puritanical man who just loved his wife so much and their relationship so amazing. Here's where we're starting to see the big difference between Wes Allen and their relationships, which have been very much mirrored throughout the series. Wes Allen is a true partnership and Barry is completely on with the exception of before they got together. But since they've been together, he's been completely open and honest with Iris and he would never, Barry would never want Iris to be some mindless drone at his side. He would sooner watch her walk away than ever do something like this. And DeVoe and his wife, it's not the same thing. You know, he has become obsessed with himself. He's feeling himself, as they say. And now, because she's not on board anymore, he would rather keep her along as a drugged up slave than let her live her life or, or dare to object to him. So it's very interesting that they're going this path. And I'm very, very interested in seeing how far down this road we're going to go and exactly what's going to be the tipping point for her to finally give up the goat, you know, give up the ghost and, and, and join Team Flash, not join, but you know, help them to finally take her husband down because she's going to be the key. That's all my thoughts on this episode. It was quite a bit, but it was a really good episode. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the second half of this season. I think it can only go up from here. It really, really can. Um, what did you guys think of this episode? How do you feel about what DeVoe did? Are you guys as shocked as I am that he was willing to drug? his wife in order to keep her compliant or is this something you just thought yeah sure of course he would have <laughs> what, what what you mean right please let me know your thoughts about this episode below i know i love reading your comments and being part of that conversation with all of you and if you like this video guys i'd love it if you click that like button if you want to see more from this geeky face please click subscribe until next time see ya